Hello and welcome everybody. In this video, I will review a new feature in Dynamics 365 supply chain management called Product Readiness Checks. This feature allows you to define a policy that contains a number of system or manual checks that should be applied to any product before it's available for any transactions. So note this feature is available for any release product, so it's not only for engineering products. So first thing we will need to do is to make sure that this product readiness check feature is enabled right here under feature management workspace. Once that is done, we will now review a readiness policy. So for that, I will navigate to engineer change management, setup, and under setup, we will click on product readiness policies. Here I have created a simple policy that contains five checks. First of all, let's take a look at the type. There are three different types of checks. The system checks will allow a system to confirm that the required setup is complete before passing or failing a check. A manual check that we see right here basically would rely on a user to make sure that required setup is in place before turning it into the passed check. And the third and last type of check that exists is a checklist. This type of check allows us to associate a questionnaire that user will need to complete in order to pass that check. Other interesting setups here we see is that we can define where exactly the check applies to. The three options that we have here is the check applies to release product, which all of our five checks here do, but we also can apply a check to either released product variant or engineering version. We can also define in which companies this check should be performed. In this case, four or five checks would be performed in all the companies to which that product is released, and the questionnaire will be performed in a specific company USMF. And then we can also assign an owner to that check. It could be a person, in this case, all five are assigned to me, or it could be a team, which is a second option. One of other things that we can review here is automatic approval. The first step is to make sure that we have passed the check so we can manually validate it or let the system validate it. Once it has been passed, the next question is, should it be automatically approved and therefore be removed from the list or should it be manually approved? In this case, all five checks have to be approved manually, and I will show you that process. The last configuration here, whether or not the test can be skipped or it's a mandatory test. In this case, we'll see that four or five checks are mandatory, therefore they cannot be skipped. That option will be disabled. But the fifth one, which is a questionnaire, is actually an optional step. So now we need to use that policy on the product. In order for us to do that, we will navigate to Product Information Management, and we will open all products and product masters. And then I will create a new product. Let's call it 105, all right? So here is our new product. That's unreleased product yet. And in here, under the general tab, I can apply that simple policy that we just reviewed to that brand new product. Now I can release that product into my USMF legal entity. So click on release products. Yes, that's a product I want to release. I want to release it to USMF legal entity, correct? And finish. Once that is done, we can now navigate to the list of released products in USMF legal entity and find the product 105. In here, we will see that there is a product readiness policy applied. We can see it, but it's a non-editable field because we can define that policy only on the product itself. So please note that you cannot generate checks for the release product directly. That's why I had to go through the product and then release it. Even if I create a release product in this form and then go back to the product that it created on the background and associate a policy to that product, the system will not generate those checks as it did right now, right? So you have to go through the product then to the release product in order for you to see those checks. So where would I see those checks that I have to pass? Well, under product tab right here, we see readiness checks. So let's click on that. And here we will see those five checks that were associated with that simple policy. And we can see that all five have a pending status. All right. Another way to see those checks is to navigate to the product readiness for discrete manufacturing workspace and click on this my open readiness checks. So let's take a look at the first check, which is a cost prices. It's a system check. So if I were to just click on check complete, 
we'll see that the system validated the uh, check and give us the result of failed, right? So it basically checked for us and said cost prices are missing for that product and therefore it's failed. One useful feature that I like here is that instead of going through the release product, I can click on the view related information and it will take me straight to the form where I need to complete that setup. But if we click on it right now, we'll see we're gonna get an error, so let's do that. Right away, the system saying, hold on a second, you can define a cost price before you define the storage dimension group, tracking dimension group, item model group, and item group, right? So we basically miss those system required fields on our release product. So what we can do from here then in this case, click on the release product details, go into edit mode and specify the standard product dimension groups here. So my tracking, my item model group, and then scroll down and specify my item group. Then we can click on validate just to confirm that our system required fields are truly populated. They are, right? This validate function existed for a while now. We all know about that. So with that, we can close that release product and click on view related information for the cost price check, right? It's gonna take us to the item price form. We can then click on new, create a new cost price for the version 10 site one, let's say the price is $100, save that, and then act. Once we do that, let's go back to our checklist right here. It was failed before, but now let's click on check complete again, and we see it has passed. And in both cases, system maintains the record, so that was the system check on the cost prices. Then we can look at the manual check for the default order settings. So we can click on view related information again, make sure that we have completed our default order settings. Let's say standard order quantity for the purchase will be 100. And then we can click on check complete. In this case, system just passes it, right? It's not gonna check anything, just say, because it's a user check, it kind of relies on the user to make sure that this check is complete. Now we have another manual check on the trade agreements. So you don't even have to click on the view related information. You can say, yeah, I think the trade agreement prices are done. So I'm gonna click on check complete and that will pass that third check right here. Now let's take a look at this fifth one, which is a second system check, uh, release product bomb uh, check right here. So we can click on view related information. It's gonna take us to the bomb version form. I'm gonna click on new bomb version. I'm gonna use an existing bomb right here. So let's say from this item and now I can save it, but then if you just go back to this check and try to validate it, you'll see that it has failed. It doesn't say why exactly it has failed, but through a trial and error, I realized that this bomb has to be not only approved, but also activated in order for the system to pass that check, right? So now we have active and approved bomb, and we should be able to pass that check. All right, and the last was that checklist, right? We can skip it, right? You see that's the only one that is non-mandatory, so we can click on the skip button right here, but we're going to complete it, right? So it has this questionnaire, so let's click on start checklist. Here's my question, select product, uh, product feedback from the focus group. So how was it for our new product? Let's say it was good, and we can click on end button right here. We see that questionnaire has been saved. We see that this task has turned to past. We can also look at the answer for that questionnaire right here. Here's a good answer. It has four points behind it. We need at least three. We can also look at reports on the answers and results, right? But now we finally have all five tasks or checks complete. So if we click on that release product details, we'll see that the status has changed from failed or pending to passed right here. Unfortunately, I do not see that field anywhere but this kind of top grid right here on the release product form, right? There is no separate field, right? But we see that has been passed. So what we need to do now is to basically approve all of those five tasks. Right now, because we have selected a manual approval, none of them have been approved. So let's just slowly just start approving them one by one. So I'm gonna click on approve and that task will disappear. So now we have four left. Let's approve again, approve again, approve again, approve again and now we have completed checklist. If I click on readiness checks, I see that all of my checks have been approved. That is all I wanted to show to you today. That's product readiness checks that are available for any standard or engineering products. I think it's a fairly useful feature. I think the list of checks can expand over time or you can develop your own checks. This would allow you to make sure that all the business critical fields are populated before you can transact with that product. Until the next time, take care.